We'll begin this tutorial by looking into how we can begin our edit. And the first step of beginning our edit is to learn how to review the clips and finding the most efficient way that works for us when it comes to reviewing the clips. Now I have an entire continuity exercise right here where you have different shots, different options, different takes. And the first thing that you should do is by going through each clip, any project that you're working on and review the clips see what is available, what is not. And the best way of doing that is just double click on the shot. Now you can always arrange the shot based on any of the columns that you can see here. If I want to sort all my shots based on the names, I can, I can just double click and it will sort all the footage based on this particular column, which is name. So I can go to the first shot and when I double click, it opens in the source monitor okay and this is one of the shot all right now i can double click and as you can see uh, you know i can um, you know review the shots by moving my mouse across the source monitor okay the other way is also by using the keyboard and you can press the space bar to play the footage okay you can also use the JKL key. Now, if you look into your keyboard, you'll find that there are JKL next to each other. Keep your fingers, each fingers on JKL. And when you press L, it plays forward. When you, when you press K, it pauses. When you press J, it plays backward. And you can, when you press them too many times, it becomes fast forward or fast backward as well. Okay. So JKL are very essential keys and you need to learn how to actually use this more often than any other keys because that's the best way to review a footage but as i mentioned before you can always review the footage by moving a mouse okay and that's that's one way of scrubbing through your footage okay now in your keyboard if you press one and two it will jump 10 frames okay so one is backward jumping 10 frames two is jumping 10 frames forward three is jumping uh, one frame okay and four is jumping one frame yeah so you can use one two three four to jump between the footage if you don't want to play back you want to just sort of jump across the shots you can do that in your keyboard you can also use the arrow key that you have and you can use the left and right arrow key to go and jump one frame as well if you are in a mac and you need to go to the very beginning of the clip then you can press function left key and function right key. It will take you to the beginning and the end of the clip. If you're using a regular keyboard, then you have the home and the end key and you can use that to jump to the very beginning or the end of a sequence. Now the next thing that we have to do is by giving a in point and out point. Okay, now this is a very simple scene where a boy is sitting in a cafe and a girl comes and a girl um, has an eyeline match with a boy and the girl waves, the boy thinks the girl is waving at him, but the girl is waving at her friend who is sitting behind the boy. So that's a very simple scene that we have here. And um, what I'm looking at is basically giving a mark in and mark out. Okay. So again, I'm using my JKL. So I'm going to play by pressing L. And I want to start the shot when he's about to pick up the coffee mug. Okay. So I'm, yeah, so I can use my, my, you know, left and right key and I give an in point. I press I for the in and I press the space bar and when the moment he looks up, I'm going to press O. Now what it just did is by, I marked the clip in and out. Okay. If you want to jump between them, if you want to jump to the in point, press Q and press W to jump to the out point. These are shortcuts for going to the playhead for in point and playhead to out point. So Q and W. Okay. So I and O and Q and W. Now you can see I and O is on the right hand side of the keyboard and Q and O is on the left hand side. So you can use both the hands and I'm going to, as we move ahead, I'm going to show you how you can pretty much dispense off with of the mouse altogether and, and you can work entirely on your keyboard alone. All right. Now, please remember here that when you're doing all of this and you marked in and marked out, for example, there's also an option here right in the source monitor where you can actually clear both marks. Okay. If you click on this button, it will clear off all the in point and the out points. Okay. Now, while we are at this, 
try to turn your focus towards this number here okay this number right now is giving you the length of the shot okay now if I give an in point here and give an out point here you can see the number has changed now it is one second 12 frames okay this is the duration of the mark in and mark out and we have, when you do not have a mark in and mark out the evit media composer will assume the length the beginning of the clip and the end of the clip as the mark in and mark out and this shows the duration of the clip the moment i've added the in point and out point this has changed okay the moment i change that further you can see now it is two seconds all right there's another way of reviewing your footage while you are at it and that is actually in the bin view okay now in the bin view itself right here you can actually go to the thumbnail view and um, you know right now what how it's happening here is that you're getting a new addition to uh, everybody composer which is which is the, this box here it, this is basically uh, is giving you a glimpse of what is available in your bin okay uh, when you have a very large bin with too many objects this is called bin map it's really helpful okay so you can you have an idea as to what all clips you have in your bin but right now i just have very few clips i don't need it actually so what i can do i will just click on this option in the first menu and i will hide the bitmap okay the bitmap is gone now i can always make the view bigger and i can right click and i choose fill sorted and then all the clips are going to be arranged according to the view of my bin here right now i can pretty much actually do and review the clips in the bin itself i can click on the shot and i can press space and as you can see that the clip has actually started playing here and you don't have to double click and bring it to your source monitor you can pretty much view it on the bin itself now let me take you to the text view as well and right here i can actually add new columns and while i'm reviewing the footage i can also uh, basically leave some comments on it this is the first step in the workflow when you are working on a project i think it's best to review the clips and while you're reviewing the clips you can always leave comments uh, so you can use these comments later to have a search when you're looking for a specific item um, and that can be really helpful so what you can do to add a, a custom column into this bin view you can just right click and choose add a custom column and you can just call it comments okay and once you have created a column you can always click and drag it and bring it right next to the clip so one way of uh, reviewing the clips is actually going straight to this particular view which is your script view in your script view you can you know uh, click on each clip you can click on a clip and you can play back for example and once it's plays back and you review the footage you can actually write comments so all these comments that you're doing right now you can actually pretty much uh, once you review the footage you can leave leave your comments and these comments can easily be searched later you know and I will show you how searching is done. It's pretty simple actually. You have this option of, uh, you know, filter field right here, you know. Or you can also press, once your bin is selected, you can also press Command F. It will open this dialog box, which is a much more detailed dialog box. And you're concerned primarily with clips and sequences. And you can search any column from here. You can, there are multiple columns here. You can search a specific column or you can search any column. For example, search, search all the columns. It will search all the bins in the projects all, or only the current bin, for example, you know, and you can type in and you can search and it will show you all the possible clips where you can have this particular entry. So if I write, for example, the word entry here itself and I press find, I get all the different options. Okay. Now, whatever clip name had the word entry, it has come. Okay. And if you, if you see here, I have in, it is also choosing clips based on my comments as well, okay? Because it's looking at all the columns. So this is a very efficient way of working by which you review the clips and you leave comments and you can always search it later to go through it and select the specific clips that you're looking for. And you can always add more columns, for example. So let me go back to the text view and I can right click here. I can create a new custom column and maybe I'm going to call it rating, you know, and I'm going to press enter and let me go to each clip, for example, 
And here, in fact, in this view itself, I can actually add a new column and um, I can click on choose column here and look for something called frame. Yeah, here is frame and I click on frame. And now what, what I have got, I can see like in you know, the frame itself. All right. So I'm going to move this here and I'm going to move this rating here as well. And if I know this, uh, you know, uh, shots pretty well because I've reviewed them, I can leave ratings. So I think this is a good one. So I'm going to leave three ratings. Press enter. I think this is not good. So I'm going to leave one rating. I think this is really good. So I'm going to give three ratings. This is okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave, choose two ratings. And while you're doing this, for example, while you're doing this, for example, you can actually, when you go to the next one and you press alt, it shows you the available options, what you have entered so far. So you don't have to type it again and again. I can just choose three. I can go to this. I can click on this, choose one. And this way you can actually rate. So this is a new column. I have added all together, a custom column, by the way. And I can always double click this to sort it and it will sort as per the ratings. So, you know, so you can see all the top ratings are now showing up and the whole bin view is now being sorted based on this particular column. Yeah, you can always delete or hide the column. You can always click on this and you can always right click and you can hide the column or you can just select the column and press delete. And what it will do, it will ask you that all the data in the column will also get lost if you delete. Okay. Now, while we're talking about different columns and different you know, ways of adding columns into your bin, you should also be aware that once you've added a particular column and you, know, you have selected a particular column or moved a column, for example, from one place to another, you can actually save this view. And this particular view is going to be available in other projects also. And how you can do that? Right on top, you can see there's an option here which says new bin view. There are existing presets here, by the way. These are all the existing presets. And I'll show you how and where you can access them outside this particular bin. Okay. So right now, I have made some additions. I have made some ratings and I have changed the, the way it looks like. I have added frame also. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a custom bin view. I'm going to save as and I'm going to call it frame rating okay because I've added a frame and I've added rating all right I click OK and it stays here all right now if I go to file if I go to settings you can see in the bin view okay I've got a new bin view which says frame rating can you see that here so it has added this custom view into my bin view settings and you can find that in settings in the user tab Okay, now if I want to make further changes and whatsoever, I can always right click on it and I can choose a duplicate and I can make some more changes. Okay, if you want to delete it, you can also delete it. You can click on this and you can always right click and you can delete. When you delete here, it will delete here as well. Okay, because it's the same thing. Now that's one way of creating a custom bin view. And by the way, this bin view will be available in all the other projects that you open in Media Composer as well, okay? So it's not like you do it once and you have to repeat it for all the other projects that you'll be working in the future. You create a particular bin view now and you can always use it in other projects as well. There are a few things that you can keep in mind, which is that, you know, if you want to sort, you know, your bin view based on two columns, for example, so I want to sort based on the name and based on the rating, okay? So I can move the rating here. I can click and I can press shift or I can press command, for example, okay, or I can press shift if it is next to each other and I'll right click and it will say sort on column ascending. Okay, now you can see that that's how it has sorted. Okay, I can select it again and I can click sort on column descending, you know, so you can actually sort two columns together. That's, that is something that you can do when it comes to sorting multiple columns basically together. All right. Now, so that is the first thing that you need to do is review your clips, change the way the bin view works for you, make a new bin view if you require to add, add uh, new columns, add existing columns, add a custom column, and you can do all of that. And all this is why you're doing it because you can make your reviewing more efficient so you can add some information and data to your existing footage as well. So it becomes helpful for you later when you're editing it. The another 
technique which a lot of people actually use and I, I say this because you know there are a lot of editors who use this technique uh, very efficiently uh, if it's a very big project and you're working with a uh, assistant editor so you can actually give the job to the assistant editor to review all your footage and do some basic selection okay which means that they're not going to do any finer selection they're going to do basic selections and this basic selection is going to be based on by creating a subclip okay so let me define what is a subclip a subclip is basically a selection that you have done from a clip okay and you're keeping it aside and Whenever you're going to do your assembly edit, you don't have to review your footage and go through it all over again. Based on the subclips, you can pretty much do a very clean and very quick assembly edit. So there are two phases to it. You review the footage and immediately make a subclip. And then in your assembly edit, you are only concerned in using the subclips to create your assembly edit. Let me show you how it can be done. All right. Now, let me uh, go back to a custom view. So I'm going to go back to format view. Okay, the simplest. Now I double click on this one and I have this particular clip. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a job done by the assistant editor, so very fast. Okay, you don't know you're not doing any finer selection. Okay, you find the door open, you want a shot to take on the before the door opens. I give an in point, I move ahead, the girl enters the frame, and I don't want people to show up, I want only until here. So I give an out point. All right, and now I'm gonna just drag this in back into the bin. Okay. And the moment I do that, it creates a new clip, okay? And it has the same name, but it has a sub next to it. This is so basically means sub clip, okay? And if you uh, focus closely into the icon, the icon is different. The icon is a very small part of the overall clip, and it which is made by a sub clip. So I create sub clip for every single clip that I have here, okay? So the girl enters from here, and I can just go an in point, and I go to an out point. Yeah, and I can always drag and drop it here. It creates the next subclip. I go to the next shot, the hand wave, and here the boy looks and he stands up, awkward, whatever, but I can click on in, I can click on out. Maybe I'm not going to use it, but I'm just going to get an out point, drag and drop it, creates a third subclip. So this way, you start creating a subclip. Now you can actually go ahead and make a new bin and call it subclips. Okay? And what you can do, you can open it and go to this and select all the subclips that you have and drag it and drop it in your subclips folder. Okay. Now when you're editing, you have only these clips to work with. It's much more efficient. You're not looking at all the footage. So the assistant editor or maybe yourself have gone through once across the footage. And while you're going through the footage, you're constantly creating subclips. So when it comes to creating the actual edit, you can always create a sequence by dragging and dropping here you know and and you can and you can always start building the sequence like this okay and please remember you have more footage after this shot okay because this is a subclip you know which means that you always have an option of extending the shot later in your in your fine cut but basically this is your first line of work you look at the clips, you think this clip can be used, you create a subclip and you start building your assembly edit. Okay. And since it is a subclip, you can always edit them, make them, make them shorter or longer based on your requirement in the fine cut stage. And just when we were doing this, you must have noticed that when I dragged the subclips into a new bin, the subclips from the existing bin is gone. When you always remember when you drag and drop it, it is moved from one bin to another. And very often there are times when you would like to make a copy of a particular clip. Now, when you're creating a copy of a particular clip, there are two ways of going about it in Avid Media Composer. And most people get very confused when they want to explain what each of them does. Now for that, let me just create two bins here. One I'm going to call as duplicate and one I'm going to call as clone. Okay. Now let me explain the difference between both all right now let's talk about duplicate let's see how we can create a duplicate of a clip the fastest way is by clicking on a particular shot for example and press command d and the moment you do that you get a exact same name which is appended by another text called copy 01 okay now this is a duplicate copy 
the basic definition of a duplicate copy is it creates another master clip which refers to the same media that's it so these are two different master clips now this is the original or whatever the master clip was existing before and this is a new master clip a, a, a completely new master clip which is still pointing to the same media file okay now if i open this for example and i give an in point and an out point for example all right okay so i've added an in point and out point if i open the duplicate copy do i see the input out point no which means this is a different master clip altogether all right it has no connection with this one yes you made a duplicate from this one itself but it has no connection to this one if it was connected then any change you make here will also reflect in the duplicate copy but it has not right because we just added the input and out point in this particular clip and when we double click on the duplicate there is no input and out point so it is a different master clip altogether pointing to the same media clip now watch what happens when you drag and drop it okay so suppose i have a clone bin right here okay as you can see the clone bin right here what i'm going to do now okay let me first drag this and put it in duplicate okay duplicate and drop it duplicate this is a duplicate copy which is copy 0 0.0 now let me create a clone copy okay the difference between clone and a duplicate and the way it gets created is that you remember how we created a duplicate copy we clicked on the clip okay and we just press command d all right and it created a copy of this particular clip okay now for creating a clone what you have to do is that you have to click so press alt and drag this and drop it in the clone folder now you see that from your earlier bin folder and from the clone folder the names are exactly the same so this is the first major difference with duplicate in duplicate what happens you get that appended dot copy 01 against the name in this one it looks exactly the same there is no dot copy now if you double click on this for example and open it in a source monitor maybe you know you can just press an in point and give an out point in the original clip okay now if i go to my clone and if i actually double click this clip for the clone clip it will have the same in point and out point so you see the big difference earlier when we created a duplicate and we added an in point and out point in the original clip in duplicate those in point and out points were not visible they were not there okay because when you make a duplicate you make a new master clip altogether but when you're making a clone you're making an exact clone of the same clip so it is it is the same master clip it is just another instance of it inside your different bins essentially they both are exactly same clips exactly same master clip you make changes to one which means that you add an in point and out point to one you make the same change to the other one as well yeah so that is a big difference if you want to understand the difference between duplicate and clone clips now while talking about bins let me explain to you something very interesting which is you can actually bring in a bin from another project okay you can actually open a bin from another project so if i click on a file and click on open bin here it will take me to the location where all my projects are stored i can go to any of the i can go to any of the projects all right i can click on any of the bins here and click on open and you will see that in my bin window here i've got a floating window now okay and i can see something called other bin all right now as i can see i have a linked media as well and i can double click on this linked media and it will open up in my source browser okay now please remember that this is an instance from another project so if i delete something here it will also affect the original project as well so then what should i do if i want to bring these clips and use these clips in my existing project right here I, I should be ideally creating a duplicate right so what i'll do i will select clips okay and i'll press command d duplicate duplicate clips will be created i can just drag and drop them okay into my duplicate bin here and that's it i have new master clips 
based on another project's bin and now they are both independent of each other which means I can actually select this and press delete okay and I am able to now bring in new master clips from an earlier project into my new project and I can use them without hesitation in this new project as well okay so this is a very very efficient way of working suppose you work on certain music files certain uh, you know graphics or certain titles or lower thirds whatsoever and you want to keep using them across other projects all you have to do is just open them using this file open bin and then you can just click duplicate and bring it to this particular project and that's it there's a fastest way of bringing in assets from another project and then you can obviously delete that particular bin and nothing will happen to that original project altogether though those clips will remain and you're going to get new master clips to work with in your new project.